This one seems to need air. The other 17 are good, but obviously that tire needs to get blown on because our compressor doesn't push that on. We don't have enough power for that. So we gotta figure out a way to blow that tire back on the bead so we can get that mounted up. But the other tires are good here. I'm just gonna check up in the hopper. We got a lot of grain to haul here the next uh, six weeks or so. We're gonna be taking a lot of corn out of those bins. Just make sure everything looks good and clean here because we haven't hauled anything for a little while. You guys have seen me do this before, but before I take this thing out of the shop here, I'm gonna use some WD-40 Specialist Spray and Stay Gel Lubricant on the bottom of these hoppers because one of the big things that gets forgotten about is these hoppers. They're on electric motors, so it doesn't take a lot of arm power to open them, but if you don't keep them lubricated, uh, the motors will go out and then you got all kinds of problems. You don't wanna deal with that. So, climb underneath here. And I'm just gonna hit these rails here to keep these lubricated. And then I'm gonna squirt a little bit inside the bearings here as well. I like this stuff because it's, uh, it's more of a stay in place gel, which I think makes more sense for all the gravel roads that we run down. So this is what I've been using lately. Had good luck with it. But you can see how dry everything does get underneath here. Now these rollers right here are supposed to roll pretty easily. They're a sealed bearing. There's one that's rolling nice. This one doesn't. They are a sealed bearing. However, stuff gets inside there, seizes them up. They don't always stay sealed the way they should. So in order to get inside the bearing a little bit, I actually use a regular. I call it regular WD-40. Technically, it is the multi-use product. It's the original stuff. It makes everything that's supposed to move continue to move. We all know things that aren't supposed to move use duct tape. Things that are supposed to move use WD-40. What not? We're gonna need some precipitation and it's just a matter of how it all comes together. Beautiful. If nothing else, at the very least, this stuff will prevent corrosion underneath there, which is really ultimately the big danger to damaging the bearings and the rails. So this is something we do at least a couple of times a year to try and keep everything moving free. Speaking of corrosion causing damages, there is supposed to be a bearing inside here. And at one time, I'm betting there was. Chase, I need a bearing for one of our Timpties. Before I go have that tire blown on, I figure I may as well put some diesel in because we're definitely going to need it. By the way, this is the truck that's got the fresh rear end put underneath it. We got it back now. The bottom end is done. New bearings, everything underneath there. So it sounded like everything looked good other than being a little bit wore out. Now we're good to go. And we got the 9560 back. We did not buy a 9570. Glenwood has one, but uh, we're kicking it around. Tractors are expensive. I guess honestly, so was that transmission. I guess it's kind of a 95-60 thing. It's a 2012 with around 2,000 hours. I guess it's a thing. Huh. Gonna have to have Jim weld that. Get me on numero dos. What do you know, bud? Not much. Did you get that go-kart engine running? I uh, know. No. I hate checking tires on semis. Hate it. There's too many of them. Half the time valve stems don't work. I just hate it, but it's pretty important because nobody likes to lose a tire. Don't want to break a rubber. I uh, I lost a steer tire once on a right front with a loaded truck going down a narrow state highway. Lost a good pair of underwear that day too. I'm working on a truck. What are you doing? You don't like the camera that much, do you? Which Junior Olympics is um, every day except for the weekend? I'm pretty sure for like five hours. Well, that's a lot of gymnastics information. Which is going to be easier for mom when Alex is. 
hockey on the same day as I do gymnastics. You got a lot to say. We got six empty seed totes left over here. They were all stacked nicely. Yesterday the wind blew them all over. We got a guy coming to pick them up tomorrow, so we're gonna stand them back up for him. Can you get it? Go ahead, I'll get it on camera. Wind's picking up, so we definitely aren't gonna spray soybeans this afternoon, which we expected. So he's gonna load that truck up. I'm actually gonna work on some, uh, an electrical connection here for the automatic tarp on the red truck because I just discovered that that's having issues. There's nothing loose, so I honestly think it's just a connection in there, but I'm use a couple of double D, w, 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 w. Maybe not as I see an issue. What's the issue? There's some crud way down in there. It's pretty hard. What's crud? Crud? What's crud? Yeah. Crud is stuff. Junk. Junk, yes. Stuff that shouldn't be down in there. Dirt, mud, junk. That's right. Wow. Oh, there we go. Get the crud out. Get in there. WD-40 Specialist. Electrical contact cleaner spray. There you go. Getting a little dusty around these here parts, Rhiannon. Dusty. Dusty. <laughs> wow. Pretty amazing stuff. Sell out. Next problem we've come across here while Dad was loading is this new conveyor we had put in last fall. We're supposed to be getting concrete under it very soon here, uh, but there is not concrete under it yet, and the whole thing has settled down to one side and shifted. Now we've got a gap here where we're spilling a little bit of corn out. It isn't bad, but more so than anything, you can kind of see, you look up there that it's not sitting right. So I don't know if we're gonna wanna pull from this bin and run this at all or not, but we need concrete under here. It's bent a couple of the shields up now, so. Corn dust. Corn dust, yes. It moves, but it isn't right. It's always something, isn't it, Anna? Yep, it's always something. We need a uh, new flighting in this one as well. And then we can seal that up so we don't get piles of rotten corn. Everything's falling apart. Our pet's heads are falling off. We're gonna pull out of a different bin here. We're gonna take some out of what we call the new wet bin, which is full of dry corn now, obviously. I'm gonna climb up and watch the top while he starts unloading just to make sure everything looks good. So I just climbed out of here. I climbed in there, I'll show you why. There are some definite chunks going on there. Those chunks are all really dry and soft. They are not rotting anymore. There was just one spot in the back there on top where it had crusted over. We had not pulled any out since that happened, so I knew it was firm underneath. I also had Dad down there well aware. He actually came up here uh, and was sitting here while I was in there. So we had two people. We're pretty confident feeling fine you know nothing's crusted over like it's gonna come washing down I stayed on top of it there we haven't pulled enough out of here if you know the way grain flows it was fine doing it but I wanted to make sure that it was soft those chunks don't look good but they're breaking up real easy when you touch them they just break apart so they're not a problem um, we caught those about a month ago and turned the fan on right away and dried them out and stopped them from growing so everything else right here this is all good corn. The only problem spot is that area back there where I had just wanted to make sure it was good. I'm pretty confident those are all gonna break up before they actually get down to the sump. He's got it flowing now so you can actually see the way this stuff flows. It actually, it's a little different than some people think. Bins actually unload from the top down first. They don't unload from the bottom. It's opposite of what you think. There's your fun grain bin fact of the day. Grain bin spoilage happens. It just does. It's an issue. It's, it's one of the reasons you got to maintain the stuff and keep on top of it. Any farmer that comes on here and tells me otherwise is, uh, you did? As I was saying, any farmer that jumps on here and tells me otherwise is either lying or they're completely unaware. It's the reality of it. It's something we all deal with. But that little bit there, we caught it early. 
it'll blend off just fine. It's, it's, it's not that big of an issue at all, as long as you stay on top of it. I gotta take this trailer off now. I'm gonna bring that truck over to the local FBN hub. We need a few more chemicals to finish off the beans. I will let her know. And here I thought Rhiannon just wanted to visit and hang out with me all day, but she was just trying to get out of doing chores inside the house. Genius. Got a couple of returns to grab first. We got some uh, uh, generic, generic triple flex that we got to return. Can you see me? There, now you can see me. All right, as I said, I gotta head over to the FBN hub. It's about 35 miles, 40 miles from here. Pick up some chemicals that we need, return a box of chemicals that we don't need, and uh, make the old swap -a and then we should have everything to finish off spraying the soybeans. We've got some of them sprayed, but man, it has been crazy windy for the last week. So at this point, most of them need to be sprayed, but we can't get out there with the wind. It sounds like later in the week, we got a lot of heat coming and a lot less wind but uh, maybe some thunderstorms, which would be fantastic because we still have not gotten much for rain. So we're doing what we can, and we still got all these trees to clear out of this uh, old CRP ground here yet. So that'll be fun. You know I'm gonna be sore tomorrow now. I know, I'm sorry. I, I threw four of those things. I'm impressed. <laughs> Free hand sanitizer. Wow. Oh, it tastes terrible. Came down, figured I'd swing through and check on some of our crops down here as long as I'm driving by. This right here is some of our first planted corn. We're getting there. We are going to be well beyond knee-high by the 4th of July, especially in spots like this, wow. Stand is looking good, plant health is looking good, that's all good things. The soybeans are just getting to the point where they're going to start growing pretty rapidly at this pace, but they look good. There is a few spots where the weeds are coming, mostly in the low-lying areas, and uh, some volunteer corn. Uh, just down the road here actually where we had uh, some corn that was down pretty bad here's one right here we've got a few grasses coming a few lambs quarter hidden out here but overall pretty dang clean yet it's time to spray them they're pretty clean but it's time but as you can probably hear from the audio it's windy out and it just stays windy and dry farmers are just never happy Unless, of course, they save $100 off of an FBN membership by using me as a reference. Yeah, there's a link in the description. All right, I'll put it on. I'm just so proud. Stay away from me. One, two, three. Under a You're going under a tunnel. Are you vlogging? All right, yep. I'm vlogging. Here we go. One, oh, three, so far the count is almost one. One, two, three. I think you need a heavier jump rope. That one's too flimsy. That is too, too flimsy. light. One, two, three. Ooh, I'm out of breath. Come on, we're waiting. The internet's waiting. We got a used lift here from Central Equipment Sales over in Sock Center, not too far away from us. I'm gonna use it to hang a massive American flag on the wall and we're gonna reset that motor there so this door closes all the way. And do some odds and ends stuff. What do you think, girls? I think we should get two of them and race them. What's this you wanna see if that keys turn on the back? Yep. And that uh, we should uh, let's see. drop everything. Well, which? With that. There, now something's on. There's two options though, a, with a, a white box and a black box. Do you know how to go down before you go too high? No, I don't want to go down. Isla, you gonna be able to go get him? Can I go for a ride? camera on here. No backup camera at all? No backup camera. What a pile. Well then just turn around. Oh, 
Oh, okay. That's pretty sporty. I want to go for a ride. <laughs> Everybody left me, so I'm going to see if I can get this thing figured out for myself now. I've got a little bit of a project I want to knock out of the way as long as we got this thing here. Come on. Come on. This conservative speed is just not my style. I'm a bit more high octane than this. Got to be a way to open up the restrictor plate on that. This is the flag here that I got from uh, Captain Dusty Walk up in Alaska who flew this thing in an F-22 Raptor for me. Took it up to 50,000 feet. Did a little barrel roll for me at 1.6 Mach. 1.1, yeah, 1.6, Mach 1.6, fast anyway. Pulled nine Gs with it. This is the coolest flag ever. That is my farmer's first flag that I want to put with it. But this one's got to go above it up on this wall. This is what I'm going to work on. So, so let's take a before here. See that? Look at that lonely wall. I mean, yeah, it's full of freedom, but not this kind of freedom. Okay, the bad news is I absolutely hate heights. Luckily, I'm only up about 18 feet right now in a wobbly little box. The good news is I figured out how to make this thing go faster. So we're all good there. And I got some magnets here. I asked people for uh, advice a little while ago. And a lot of people said, you know, self-tappers with a big washer. And that would work. But I really didn't want to put... I didn't want to put a screw through an American flag. So this way, I got these rare earth magnets right off Amazon. Super cheap. And then if I don't like the way they're hung, I can move them around. That's my plan anyway. Let's see if it comes to fruition. That's bigger than I expected it to be up there. That's good. I thought it was going to be a bit small. But I'm a lot farther from that wall than I want to be. These magnets aren't quite as strong as I was hoping. This is so much different than driving a race car or a combine. Running over a log chain. Oh, we're good. It does not have four-wheel drive. Okay. Here's the important one. The magnets are not strong enough. They need to be like twice the size or twice the power. Uh, so I'm going to jump on Amazon right now and order some better magnets. But they're real close to where I want them to be. I might, might do a better job of maybe centering them after I stare at them for a few days. But I definitely don't want them to come down so I'm gonna get some bigger magnets coming but that that's a pretty big improvement my hang up here because I know a lot of guys are gonna point this out is that when a flag is hung vertically the Union is on the left up into the left that's the way the American flag is the farmers first flag if I hung it any differently you wouldn't be able to you can't really read farmers first anyway how should I do that I'm thinking when I, I don't know, Onyx, do I need to turn them the other way or hang them like that? My theory on this is that the farmer's first flag is not an American flag. That one is not critical. The American flag is hung correctly. Rhiannon, what do you think of our new flags? Um, what? What do you think of our new flags? Tracy yeah. Camera. I'm going to get bigger, better magnets and I'm going to reposition those things. But so far, I like it. They're going to fit on that wall well. I, I got the correct sizes. Those are eight foot flags. I like it. All right, one of my last little odd job things for the day here. I need to take a couple tile flags out and replace a couple tiles in spots where the flags are gone because it's hard to find a good combine operator that doesn't run over these things. That's me. I, I ate like five of them up with the combine last year. It was a bad year. Usually, like maybe one or two. Last year was uh, wasn't good. Before I forget, uh, like I did last time in the last video, I started talking about Farm Simulator, and then I got interrupted by the girls, and then I forgot all about it. Our map, it is right there. It is not available like to the public yet, to to what I understand. Again, I'm not a gamer. I just don't get into games. I'm not going to play Farm Simulator. I don't know how this stuff all works. The map is there it's on the internet uh let's see mr Sealy p did a really really extensive awesome tour on it he did awesome job uh check that video out if that interests you um dj dj goham 
I believe is another channel, did a tour on it and uh, the squad did a quick tour on it. Check those videos out if, if that's your thing, if you wanna check that out. It'll let you know where the map is at. You can see exactly what that map looks like. It's extremely realistic. It's, uh, it's kind of it's weird for me to watch and look in the buildings and see just how realistic it is here in the yard, but it's cool. That's the deal with the map. I don't believe you can download it yet onto your personal, your PC or your gaming system or whatever you're using, but the map is there. It's in testing. It's very close. Check out those channels. Um, Becky, go ahead and link those below so people can actually check out those videos in case I said one of them wrong, but, but uh, check those out if that's your thing. Okay, here we go. Anna, you're sitting on a unicorn. Oh, that's a zebra? Yeah. And that. Dad, watch this. All right, let's see it. I'm gonna go on my watch mine, Dad. Oh, okay, I'll watch them both. And take yeah. a video of them. Now I'm okay. my Santa. All right, let's see it. But this is where you Wow. Wow. 